The economic news today is staggering. We knew it was coming, but you have to pinch yourself when you're confronted with the reality. It's tragic for the nation, really. An $85 billion deficit this year, that's the financial year just finished, that's the budget in which we were on track to return to surplus for the first time in a dozen years. And next year, the budget deficit will blow out to, wait for it, $184 billion. Well, thereabouts, who can really tell from here? The federal government is pumping close to 300 billion borrowed dollars into the economy to keep businesses and people afloat, while the shrinking economy, the recession, rips the heart out of taxation revenues going into government. With all this, government debt is now on track to top more than $850 billion. It'll probably rise to a trillion dollars within a few years. A year ago, he looked like the luckiest treasurer of this century. But Josh Frydenberg was right yesterday when he said these numbers were going to be eye-watering. And today he revealed the harsh reality. These harsh numbers reflect the harsh reality we face. The economic outlook remains very uncertain. The economy will shrink by more than 3% this year, and unemployment will go above 9%. It'll push towards 10%. But the Treasurer is forecasting better times starting later this year and growing through next year. And it's this, force, it's, it's this forecasting, it's these expectations that I reckon we need to be very careful about. Treasury has based their assumptions on Victoria being in lockdown for six weeks from the 9th of July, after which restrictions are progressively eased. Other states are assumed to be gradually opening up in accordance with the plan agreed by the National Cabinet on the 8th of May. Yeah, the, opti the optimism there is based on keeping the virus at bay. And as we've seen, that's easier said than done. Alternatively, it means that when there are outbreaks in the future, we don't lock down hard the way Melbourne has done. Otherwise, we pay an even heavier economic cost. I'll have more to say on this tomorrow and I'll discuss it with some guests in just a moment. But this is a major risk. We're talking about coming out of this in the coming months when, in fact, we might be dealing with the pandemic much longer, even years. Now, when it comes to the situation in Melbourne, it was compulsory mask wearing day one today and we'll cross there in a moment too. But remember yesterday how I criticised Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews for blaming the outbreaks in his state on his own citizens. Let's have a look again. He blamed people for not isolating while waiting for test results. I'm very, very unhappy and very sad to have to report that nearly 9 in 10, or 3,400 cases, uh, did not isolate between when they first felt sick and when they went to get a test. Now, that's an interesting measure in that people have felt sick, they've got symptoms and they've kept going shopping, they've kept going to work. Now, that was pretty rough at the time and I said so because none of this is easy for anyone. Most people are doing the best they can. But it gets worse. It's been revealed today that information circulated widely by Victorian authorities online and in other materials actually told people they don't have to isolate while they're waiting for test results. Look at these talking points circulated to medical staff. They say, if you're feeling well, you don't, do not need to isolate while waiting for your test results. So the Andrews government was blaming Victorians, shifting the blame onto the public, when these people were actually following the clear advice they were given by Premier Daniel Andrews' government. He admitted the mistakes today. The advice that was presented was wrong. People should isolate and wait for the test uh, result. That's, that, is, that is the uh, advice. Uh, and the signs that said something different were wrong. There were a handful of them. There were some incorrect signs out there. That's, that's true. Uh, I'm told that that's been fixed. Now, Daniel Andrews, this is tough for everyone, but you've got to do better than that. And an apology to the Victorians you blamed might not have gone astray.